Good day and welcome to our short course and explanation and demonstration of how to install MySQL uh, older versions onto Windows Server 2016 uh, or onto uh, Windows 10. So uh, let's just get started and we'll run through it. It's pretty fast, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So go to, you can just Google download whatever you'd like, or you can just go to MySQL.com, click downloads along the top here, and then go to the community build. Uh, community build is the uh, free build that you're probably looking for. Um, so let's go to the MySQL community server. That's the again the free build that you're probably looking for. And um, uh, for most people, they'll just go down to the bottom here and they will download this uh, version. Uh, they'll get their installer and off they'll go. However, I can't use version 8. I need version 5.5. So I have to scroll up here and I see version 5.5 is here. Uh, it's a still a supported uh, general uh, release version, so I can still grab it. Uh, however, if it's an older one, I just go to archive versions. But let's go to 5.5, because that's the one I care about. There it is, and I want it for Windows, and I want it uh, Windows 64-bit, uh, which you'll see here. And I want the latest 5.5, so that's, I guess, what's there. Is that correct? Yes, 5.5, that's it. And now I'll click Go to Download Page. And there it is. Uh, I will select download. Now you'll notice the installer says it's 32-bit, even though it's uh, so. Don't worry about that. Even though it's going to uh, install the 64-bit version, what's doing the install is a 32-bit installer. So it's a 32-bit installer installing 64-bit uh, MySQL. So don't sweat that, even though it's a bit weird. Uh, oh, that's right. Here's a notice up here. You can uh, get it just if you don't understand that. Let's click download. Uh, and it's asking me to sign in. I don't want an Oracle account, so I'm just going to click no thanks, get started. And there it is, and I'm going to save it on the desktop. Desktop, there it is. Uh, now I'm going to leave everything here in real time. I'm not going to cut uh, anything out. So if uh, you're bored waiting for something to uh, complete, just skip ahead. So this apparently has about 40 seconds left. So it's 35% through. My guess is it's got about 30 seconds. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there you go. If you want to hear me singing, then you'll have to skip ahead. I'm leaving it in, by the way, so you can see the actual time it takes to get this done. Um, not because I'm too lazy to cut it out. Come on, Mr. MySQL. Well, we're done with this page, so I'm just going to minimize it at this point, and we'll wait for it to show up here. So, you can see at the bottom here how much time it's got left, which is not much. There it is. Now, I could just double click it and install it, but I know because it's not a trusted from a trusted site, it's going to be blocked. So I'm just going to right click on it and select properties. And in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to select unblock. It's not really necessary to do that, but uh, it saves a click later. So I'm just going to just going to unlock it, unblock it. So there we go. So let's double click on it and it'll start running. Ask me if I want to be in it, want it to run as an admin in a minute. Come on. Yes. So the user account control, it's up. Yes, I know it's lame. It's what I got. Okie dokie. Well, time remaining from 6 seconds to 26 seconds, that's nice. <laughs> um, there we go. Yes, I would like to install the, or run the launcher. So what that said, if you bothered to look at it, um, most people just click through it, but what it was saying is, hey, do you want to run the launcher? And yes, I do. Okay, so pretty straightforward stuff. Agree with the license agreement. 
next. And I notice over here that this changes depending on what I select here. So the developer default is mostly everything. Uh, you can look through here and see if it includes what you want. Uh, there's a server install, which is just going to install the server backend. There's a client install that's just going to install the management tools. A full is everything. And then custom is what we're going to choose because I want just the uh, workbench management uh, and the database. I want both of them to be on this. I don't want just the server only. Uh, uh, so I want, uh, and I don't want full because it's a lot of stuff I don't care about. So I'm just going to click next here. Now you'd think you'd be able to click here and click, uh, you know, over to add it to the products to be installed, but you can't. So you have to keep expanding, keep expanding, and there it is. So I want the, and this does not select it for you, so you have to select the 64 bit version. Um, I suppose there's uh, somebody that would want to install a 32 bit version on their 64 bit machines, but that's not me. I want the 64 bit version, so there we go. And I want management workbench, um, uh, and uh, the rest of this I don't care about. If you do, that's great, but um, not necessary for what, uh, what I'm doing. So let's just roll through this. And it's saying, hey, you're missing some, uh, some, prereq some prereqs. So uh, you click here, and I could click next, but that'll be a problem later. So what I want to do is click on either of these. Uh, well, I'll click on the first one first and click Execute, and it's going to de it's going to install uh, Virtual C uh, 2008, uh, and I, that's a 64-bit version. I'm almost positive. No, I don't know whether I'm not positive of that. I think it is, but anyway, it's going to install what it needs. And uh, there we go. A little quirk with this install is if you widen out these columns, it doesn't tell you anything else. <laughs> so it's not the most useful. So, but anyway, there it is. You can see it's got that 64-bit uh, version. There we go. Uh, but it, the status is instl dot dot dot, like that's somehow useful. Anyway, okay, and now it needs this other one. So let's uh, go through and do the um, uh, Visual C install, 64-bit 2015 build. So it's successful. Close. And now I can click Next. So I'm going to do that. And uh, let's just click, click Execute. It's going to run through. So the only thing that's really odd about this is that there's no way through the GUI to install it in a particular location. You have to install it in the default, which is C Program Files, if you've got the 64-bit version, or C Program Files x86, if you have the 32-bit version. So a bit odd. Um, you can, I believe, um, uh, script it through uh, the command line, but I'm not going to do that. This show high details is just something to keep you amused while you're waiting. Uh, if you're like me and you can't stand to not see something clicking by, click show details, and it'll give you a status. So at this point, it's just doing a cleanup, but it's actually done the work. And then we just have configuration left. I'll show you how to create a. Um, I'll show you how to create a database uh, in the command line and also how to play around in the GUI for a few seconds so you get started. And uh, for most people, that's really all you'll need. After this, you'll get your product going that uh, bolts into MySQL and be on your way. OK, so I'm going just going to click uh, Next here. And it's saying, hey, we've got to configure it. OK, great, good to know. OK, so the uh, uh, it's asking here what type of computer we've got. OK, so there's three kinds. A development computer is basically a client machine. So if you think of this as a Windows 10 box, you know, you're, you're a dev and you're working at home. And uh, that machine is doing everything from running PowerPoint to surfing and watching videos. You don't want MySQL to take all of the uh, memory. Uh, then the other end of that spectrum is a dedicated uh, computer, which is a dedicated server that's just going to be running MySQL, in which case you want it to take as much of the resources as you can. Um, most people, pro well, in my case, I just want to do a server. This is a server, and uh, this is actually server. Uh, 2016. So uh, in my case, I'm going to do a server uh, computer. But again, if this was my home PC or even a, an office PC, I'd probably select dev computer. But I'm going to select uh, server computer. Now, uh, there's TCP IP here. Uh, there are name pipes and shared memory to connect to it. Uh, however, these are pretty much dead. Name pipes and shared memory just aren't used much anymore. So you'll probably find with the default of TCP IP. Um, if not, you can configure them later, but why bother? Just um, uh, check your documentation for whatever reason you're installing this and see if you need name pipes or shared memory. You almost certainly don't. 
Then uh, the only other thing you care about here is the port number. The port number is default 3306. It's been that way forever. And considering that MySQL is a huge product uh, and the fact that 3306 is an obscure number, uh, it's very unlikely that it will be in conflict with something else unless you already have MySQL installed and you're just doing another instance. In which case, you'll have a yellow bang here. A bang is a triangle, a uh, yellow triangle with an exclamation mark in the middle. And what it'll be telling you is, they're trying to tell you is, hey, choose another number. So, you know, so choose seven or 10 or something else, right? So yeah, there's a bang there. So I'm just gonna put it back to the default 3306 and I'm just gonna click next. And uh, root password, um, yeah, so uh, look, you can set this to whatever you want, um, but uh, please don't set it to one, two, three, four, or password, something like that. So it doesn't have to be the, the most secure password because it's probably not exposed outside. But at the same time, you don't wanna make it something like password so that if something does happen to get in your network, it can't just crawl through your you know stuff automatically. Uh, crawl through your databases. So, you know, write something. So this says it's weak. My password is not weak that I've used here. It's uppercase, lowercase, and number, and not using common set of patterns, but it, it thinks it's weak. So uh, whatever, it's gonna have to get over it. Um, so the note here is that this is for the root account. And the root account, the username is cleverly root, R-O-O-T. And the password's whatever you just set. However, you could click add user and add a second user in, or a third or a fifth or whatever else you want. Username uh, is whatever you'd like. Uh, there's no restrictions. Uh, how many? What server do you want it to go to? Well, I want it on all of them. Uh, what res what role do you want them to have? You, is it just a backup admin, or is it a user admin, or security guy? Uh, for most people, you'd just leave it at DB admin. If you're looking at this, you're probably new to it, and a DB admin is a database admin, full thing. And again, same thing with the password. Pick a password that's not completely obvious. Anyway, I'm I'm just going to use the root because that's all I care about. Click next. Now. Uh, here it's asking for service details. So it's saying, hey, um, we can run this uh, in the background for you as a Windows service. And um, so we'll configure it for you. Uh, and we'll also set it to start automatically every time Windows starts up. Now, if this is a server, that's what you want. If this is a dev computer, it's probably what you want. Um, if, it's, uh, if you're a dev and you're only using this really intermittently, um, then you might want to turn that off so it's not chewing up resources in the background on your machine all the time. Um, however, it's pretty unlikely. Most people are just going to want to leave that on. You want it to start up automatically. I'll show you services in a minute once this uh, gets going. Um, and then it's uh, who do you want this uh, that service to run as, right? That program that runs in the background. Well, uh, we'll just leave it at, uh, leave it at that. Uh, so I'm going to click uh, next, uh, leave it at a system account, standard system account, and um, uh, it's going to come up in a minute, and now as soon as I click Execute, it's going to start filling in these little dots. So let's take a look here. So let's let it go. And uh, I'll bring up Services, because on this computer, uh, on this virtual machine, it's really slow to bring up the Services, which is a bit unusual. So I'll bring it up now, and um, we'll take a look as we're waiting for this to complete all of its install. Well, that actually finished super fast. So uh, at this point I can click finish and uh, next. And do I want to start the workbench or do I just want to click the workbench here? Click start and you'll see my the workbench is there. It's also under, if you scroll down, it'll be, well, right there under MySQL. It will be right there. So uh, for the heck of it, I'll have it started automatically here. So I'll just click finish and it's done. Now in here I should see MySQL. There it is, MySQL. And it's running and looks happy, so we can get rid of that. You don't have to do this step where you check it, but I just like to. Uh, as we're waiting for the GUI to launch, I'm also going to bring up the command line. So the command line here, um, MySQL 5.5 command line, it's also under MySQL here. So let's bring up the command line. And then uh, I'll show you how to create uh, a database here. So in this case, it's asking me for the password. The password is the one I just entered in the system. So there we go. And this should come up with everything's okay. Yeah, it looks okay. So uh, let's bring up, uh, let's add a database now. Okay, so uh, to create a database, pretty straightforward. The command is create database. And a few other bits at the end here you can see. And I'm just going to call this database um, test1. You can call it whatever you'd like. Um, it's not case sensitive here. Uh, well, it, it doesn't make a difference for the purpose of creation. So let's just press enter. And bedingo, it's created. 
Now I can play with command line and show you other things, but let's keep this brief and click cancel. Um, and I'm running Workbench on an unsupported operating system. <laughs> nice. So yeah. All right. Well, it's going to have to get over it yeah, because I, I need to run it. <laughs> so let's click OK. Now, OK, so this is the Workbench. This is the GUI, um, be the equivalent to um, uh, you know, SQL Management Console, if you're running Microsoft SQL. Anyway, uh, you can click through this and play, but basically you just want to look at the local instance. So you just uh, click on that, and it asks for the password, which I will enter. Badingo. There it is. Now, you'll notice here, I've got a database I created earlier, um, uh, before I recorded this, and this test one database. So I, I don't have any tables in here, which kind of sucks, but that's what it is. So you can see, however, it did get created, and there, you know, there is stuff here. Uh, other than that, uh, most of the stuff's pretty straightforward. You know how to back things up and whatever. You can fill a, figure out that out from just using the menus. This is not uh, as complex as uh, Microsoft SQL, um, uh, although they do have uh, uh, very uh, much ro more robust versions available if you want to pay. Uh, to get the cluster version, the enterprise, things like that. But for most people, this is just fine. So that's it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at uh, www.urtech.ca, and we'll help you there. Thank you. Bye-bye.